Desmond, I want to highlight something from the Marshall Project report. They write, low registration numbers for formerly incarcerated people reflect more than apathy and political alienation. Most don't even know they have the right to vote. None of the states in our analysis required corrections departments or boards of elections to notify newly eligible voters of their rights. So let me get this straight. The law may have changed, but it's now up to groups like yours to run outreach campaigns. Is that right? Yes, that's correct, Alicia. You know, I think of the Juneteenth effect. That's what I call it. It reminds me of the story about Juneteenth where the slaves in Galveston did not realize that they were free until two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, it's the same thing here in Florida, where even after the passage of Amendment 4, uh, there's still a significant number of returning citizens who don't even realize uh, what Amendment 4 does uh, or even uh, how it impacts their lives and that it passed. And so we're we're constantly out in the community now, really trying to engage those individuals and get them plugged into democracy. So Desmond, tell me, when you're having those conversations with individuals who are formerly incarcerated and you say to them, you know, you, you now have access to vote, you can vote, what is it you most frequently hear from them? <laughs> what I most frequently experience is, you know, it's almost like a weight has been lifted off of their mm. back. There's so many people because of so many years of, of being denied the right to vote and being ostracized uh, by, uh, by our society and, and the narrative that basically says that if you have a felony conviction that you're not worthy of having your voice heard or being a part of this society, knowing or hearing that they now have the opportunity to participate in democracy is a very liberating experience. And I've seen grown men and women in their 50s and 60s and 70s uh, just break down in tears. You know, one particular story here in Florida, we had a woman who had been trying for over 20 years to have her rights restored to be able to participate in elections. And when she was finally able to register to vote, you know, she informed us that she was given six months to live by her doctor and her dying wish, right, was not to go to Disney World or to meet a famous celebrity. Her dying wish was to be able to feel what it was like to cast a ballot. Wow. Desmond, if the big gap here, right, between people who now have the right to vote, actually registering to vote and turning out to vote, is their simple understanding that their right has been restored. What is the government's role in communicating that? Well, I think the government should play a major role in this. I think that any government worth its, its, its weight should be encouraging people to participate in our democracy. Right. It's not about the right. It's not about the left. It's under, it's an understanding that our democracy uh, benefits everyone and becomes more vibrant when everyone participates. And we should not have a government who focuses on trying to limit access to the ballot box, but rather they should be trying to expand access. Desmond, of course, some states restore voting rights upon release from prison. Others don't restore them until parole has been completed. How does the patchwork of laws complicate this issue? Well, one of the very first things it does is that it gives people in various states the impression that because of a felony conviction, they're not allowed to participate in elections. For instance, uh, the, uh, during the runoff in Georgia, we encountered uh, a slew of returning citizens who were eligible to vote, but they were under the understanding that they could not vote because of a prior felony conviction. So, so that's the uh, the biggest hurdle to overcome, uh, really letting people know that once they're done with their time, uh, a lot of states are allowing people uh, to be able to, to participate in our democracy. Now, we do know that about 30 states uh, require some type of legal financial obligation that a person must satisfy before registering the vote. But these are uh, obstacles that I think that we're able to fight through and really engage people in, in a very, very uh, uh, broad way. For instance, in Florida, even though we have uh, outstanding legal financial obligation requirement, out of the 1.4 million that Amendment 4 impacted, Right. A little over 600,000 do not have those financial requirements and can register to vote right now today. Desmond, what is your message to federal legislators about why this needs to be reckoned with at the federal level? Well, you know, when you talk about voting, right, 
as political as it may seem, and, and you know, you hear Democrats versus Republicans and how many votes Democrats gain or lose or vice versa, the reality is, is that voting should not be political. Right. When we talk about our democracy, it should not be politicized. Right. When we to, when we talk about a democracy, it's about people from all walks of life, all political persuasions, whether or not they agree with you or, 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 or they don't. They should be able to participate in any election. Right. And that's a message that we're pushing here in Florida. We fought just as hard for the person that wanted to vote for Donald Trump as we did for the person who wished they could have voted for President Barack Obama. Everyone needs to participate and we don't we should not politicize it. When we look at this uh, as a division in our country, my mind goes back to what we're seeing right now in South Florida and in, in Surfside, right? That there are moments when this country can come together and don't care if you're Democrat or Republican or who you voted for, right? When we can rally around people's lives, right, because of what they're going through, we should be rallying around our democracy the same way, regardless of what people, uh, uh, how they vote or what they think or the color of their skin, they should be able to join us in participating in democracy.